Hello, everybody, and welcome to Get Found, Get Clicked, Get Customers. Uh, this is a presentation about how to grow your print business through digital marketing. Um, as we certainly know from uh, everybody being home for the last uh, four, five months, uh, online shopping, online living, online life um, is how most of us spend most of our time. And um, that is how business is being done. That's how business is being searched. And uh, that is how customers are being funneled to uh, the appropriate retail um, uh, uh, venues that uh, they are searching for through online marketing. Now, I know most of you are printers and I know most of you have been told this for a very long time that this is important. The difference here is that David Murphy, who was one of the first people I met in the printing industry, worked in the printing industry for David, how many years? 30 years? A long time. Yeah. And I think you and I met at the SGIA show in uh, New Orleans in 2011. Correct. You were the okay, wide camera, format okay. guy. You taught me about, <laughs> you told me about wide format. Uh, it's okay. so, so amazing. Um, and of course, uh, David was always very kind, always uh, explained things to me because as everybody knows, I don't understand how the machines work. I just want to know what they do. And um, I, you know, was with David Murphy through his rise up all the way to the global head of uh, page wide press marketing. So he understands the printers. He understands print businesses. And he is now able to help everybody generate those leads, generate that business. I, I call it an invisible sales force. So I'm thrilled to death that David has agreed to uh, share this information with everybody. And um, David, just thank you, thank you again. And please uh, let everybody know about you know about yourself and and what well, they're going to say. And thank you so much, uh, Deborah. And thank you all for joining. We have a really tremendous turnout here. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, we've got representation from at least 25 countries from the last uh, count. And I really uh, appreciate you all taking time out of your data to, to learn because this is a, an important topic, as Deborah says. It's timely, it's relevant, and it's something that I hope for truly that you all will come away with some um, learnings and some uh, reinforcement of your own knowledge of how you can uh, use the, some of these techniques and tactics to blend in with your own marketing strategy to help uh, increase the recall of your brand in the marketplace, to increase the response rates of your outbound direct marketing, to increase the conversion of leads to opportunities to customers, and then increase the uh, retention of those customers once they come on board with you. So, you know, we're gonna be talking a lot about uh, Google today. Um, and when you, me, or anyone else goes on the internet and, and opens their browser window and and maybe uh, you know begins to type into the Google search uh, window. They want to do one of four things, and Google calls these things micro moments. And the first thing, or one of the the four things that they want to do is they want to know something. They might not be ready to buy something, but they want knowledge or education or content about some problem that they want to solve. The second thing that they might want to do is they want to go someplace. And in this case, they might want to go to a, a business that can help them uh, solve a problem. And then the third thing they might want to do is actually do something. So they're going to be doing some research uh, about the application, about the project, about the, the product or solution that they are trying to deliver. And so they want some educational content around that. And then fourthly, what they'll want to do is they want to buy. And this is where they want to learn who they can connect with, who has this uh, most relevant information based on their search. So when we go through this presentation over the next few minutes, you're gonna hear a lot about relevance and authority. And those two elements will help you uh, be more prominent and more meaningful in uh, the search process when your customers will 
be looking for whatever it is that you're offering. So I have this uh, pretty well coordinated in terms of how we're gonna spend the next few minutes together. We can uh, diverge from this as you like, but what I'd like to do is I wanna cover uh, these, these first five topics uh, and we'll have about 40, 45 minutes to do so. And then I built in about 15 minutes for discussion and Q&A. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is why it's important for you all in the print up system to thrive during this pandemic and beyond and attached to that, as you know, why it's so difficult. And we're not gonna talk so much about why it's difficult, but how we can uh, resolve that difficulty. And then we're gonna talk about uh, the high level of digital marketing, how it drives new business for you. Um, and then we're going to try to, you know, go through some of those, uh, uh, you know, the, the acronyms that you might not be familiar with. And we're going to demystify some of these concepts so that you can understand the simplest form of, of these concepts and, and how it really relates to your strategy. So we will then go uh, from pay-per-click into uh, search engine optimization. Um, I am going to uh, touch this on a national and local level. And because we have so many... Um, you know, uh, attendees here from um, different countries. And as some of you will market in different languages and across borders, we'll talk a little bit about international SEO, but mostly this is gonna be a, a national and a local uh, discussion. And then finally, we'll just talk about how you can get started and what your options are to do it uh, either yourself or to partner with someone. So with that, you know, I wanna give just a very brief biography of, of me in case uh, some of you don't know me. So I started my first uh, marketing business uh, in my senior year in high school. I ran that for nine years while I was uh, going through my undergrad program. It didn't take me nine years, by the way, <laughs> but I did uh, work my way through college uh, uh, while I was um, owning and operating this marketing company. And uh, I learned a lot about solving customers' needs uh, and understanding customers' needs there. And that was a really great transition for me to get into the, the graphics and document print production industry. Uh, I was 18 years at uh, Riso and 10 years at HP. And then uh, along the way, I've served as a board member, a committee member, and advisor to a lot of print industry associations. So as Deborah said, I. You know, I've been in um, some of your plants. I've been in uh, large format uh, science shops. I've been in uh, letter shops and, and I've been in book manufacturers and corrugated, um, you know, converter, uh, conversion uh, facilities. I've been in implants. So I think I understand a lot about, you know, the function and the marketing aspect of your businesses. But we're really going to tie this mostly into how you can bring new opportunities to your door. So real quickly, this is basically this company that I started uh, a few months ago after leaving HP for uh, a really great 10 year period. I, I looked around, I talked to a lot of my friends and colleagues in the print industry and you know, realized that there was an opportunity. Um, this was actually not so much related to COVID, but uh, it became more relevant uh, as COVID accelerated. And that is how you can blend your current outbound marketing strategy with inbound tactics. And so this is really critical to tie these two elements together because these have differences in terms of whether your buyers have current intent or whether they are just in that exploration phase. So in outbound marketing, we are working on strategic promotion and how you deliver your message to a very targeted defined audience um, and doing so with personalization and tactile uh, benefits of uh, printed direct mail and then reinforcing that with electronic communications as you all know well. But then there are those who are uh, doing their own research and their own exploration and their own discovery before you have contacted them. And so what we really want to do is increase that recall, response, um, conversion and retention along every stage of the funnel as that the buyer's journey matches your sales journey and your marketing journey. And we need to make sure that we are uh, being relevant and authoritative in the content we deliver them. And so just for a quick thing in the lower left hand corner, you can see a couple of acronyms, SEO is search engine optimization, PPC is pay-per-click advertising. And we'll get into a bit more explanation of those for um, those of you who need it. So, you know, there are so many countries around the world um, whose governments have already um, 
classified print and packaging sectors as critical or essential uh, components of the economic infrastructure. And you know, this is uh, great news for print because you are uh, a valuable and actually an invaluable part of the, you know, the supply chain of these industries. But then there are a lot of industries that are not on this uh, spoke chart and there are travel and, and hospitality and, and tourism and entertainment and recreation and a lot of restaurants and, and retail stores. And as you know, those that might not be categorized as essential or critical are you know, either shut down temporarily or somehow they might be working from home. So even if you are calling on these uh, uh, companies and these industries, it's really challenging for you to get a hold of the, the people and deliver this message. So I just have this uh, kind of a chart here that uh, is based on my experience and my understanding of how uh, print service providers and packaging converters will uh, you know, deliver the message of value to new opportunities, to new leads in the market. And there are effectively, you know, these nine areas. And so you can see the continuum on the lower left where we talk about the sales and marketing, the traditional face-to-face uh, -face sales calls, plus your outbound direct marketing. And then as that continuum moves to the right, you move a little bit more to uh, an, an inter internet-based uh, activity. But what's happened since basically, and I'm gonna use March 16th as the date, because that's the date that the US began its uh, shutdown. And I know that in other countries that date is different, but you know, what's happened since then is, you know, it's very, very difficult, uh, if not impossible for you to reach prospects through face-to-face -face sales calls. Trade shows are not happening. Uh, associations and conference events, and face-to-face -face presentations uh, at uh, VIP meetings, if it has more than 50 people, not happening. So this has made it extraordinarily difficult for your sales teams to make contact with these uh, prospects and, and educate them and inform them of what your value proposition is. So this really creates this huge opportunity for you to not pivot, but just to bring in that right side of the continuum, and that is to invest more in uh, internet marketing, uh, pay-per-click advertising, search engine optimization, uh, content marketing that can be delivered through social media. And when you do so, you should find that your email direct marketing, uh, telemarketing will have higher response rates because uh, there are a lot of studies that show how many people uh, receive multiple points of contact, but this is one that I think is particularly relevant because it shows that about half of buyers see some uh, three different types of content before they'll even respond to an email or take a call, or if you're even knocking on the door, whether they'll talk to you. So they want to have done a little bit of research or receive some information from your company beforehand, typically. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop our you know, telemarketing and email and direct mail, it just means that this sort of greases the skids, if you will, to provide some educational content to them before you actually make that content. And so those two pieces working together should increase the effectiveness and the response rate of your direct marketing outreach, while at the same time, it should bring in more passive, sort of automated 24 seven uh, leads input to your website. So it really is a, um, a bio, an ecosystem that uh, works in a cycle. And it's, uh, it's something that if you are delivering outbound content uh, as well as inbound content, it really will help inform and inspire the, uh, the, the prospect before they talk to you. So now let's talk just for a minute about uh, what's happening with COVID. Um, I think we know, but this is from HubSpot and this is, uh, a few slides that really accentuate what I think is a, a real challenge for, for print organizations. So first of all, since March 16th, there's been about a 15% decline in advertising. And that's bad news for print because print is a big part of advertising marketing mix. But it's also, you know, bad news uh, for, for you because you can't, you know, reach the audience um, that you need to reach to deliver that message. So that creates a little bit of a struggle. This is a huge challenge here uh, in that there have been fewer sales deals 
created and fewer sales deals closed. So the orange bars are the deals created and the, the green uh, line chart is the sales deal, deals closed. You can see in the last couple of weeks, there has been a little bit of uptick in, uh, in conversion of some of these deals that were started a while ago. So that's encouraging good news for us. But at the same time, you know, there's a, a big, huge lost uh, opportunity from having all of those weeks where we hadn't been able to start new deals. So what's happening when salespeople can't knock on doors because people aren't in their offices, they are, um, you know, making fewer calls, obviously. So down about 27%, the low point in, um, in uh, I think it was April 8th was the low point. Uh, and down about 20% overall uh, at the end of June. Now, when they can't, when salespeople can't make sales calls, what do they do? They're probably at home and they are hammering on their um, email platform and they're trying to reach prospects, uh, you know, individually uh, that they couldn't reach otherwise. But so the <laughs> you look here and you can see that some of these weeks had. 50 and 70 percent increase in sales email uh, outbound sends since the uh, you know the benchmark of, of pre-COVID and so that has deluged and overwhelmed prospects and you can see what happened to the response rate not only you know are people um, you know not receiving their emails as they once were but they're probably receiving more uh, from salespeople than ever before. So the response rate is down like 25%. Really uh, discouraging news. But what is interesting in this, in this research is that marketing emails from, you know, your marketing team have increased in the range of 25 to, to 35%. Um, and the open rate has also increased. So you've got open rates from the marketing side it's in the 15 to 20% increase rate over pre-COVID level. So that's encouraging. Um, it shows that, you know, prospects are uh, at least listening. They're at least paying attention. They're in a discovery mode. They're in a pivot mode and they're trying to determine what they are going to do next. And so these messages being sent by marketing are apparently resonating with them. But the, the challenge is that if there's a, too much volume, then the response rate will also go down. So but here's David, the, yes, uh, we do have one question. Sure. Uh, I know the data is from HubSpot, but yes. um, is uh, the question is, is this in general for all industries or is this specific to print? This is all industries and this is taken from HubSpot's client base, which is comprised of 70,000 websites around the world. Um, and um, in this uh, slide that I'm or in the slide deck that I'll send out there is a hyperlink at the lower right hand corner where you can go and see this updated week over week so I look at this every week just to see what the trend line is but this is all industries and then you can drill down by industry to see what's happening in consumer goods in construction in travel in uh, hospitality and entertainment and cons uh, re retail and, and restaurants and so you can see where there is a, an uptick or downtick by a sector and by region. So you could drill down to um, North America, EMEA, or uh, Asia Pacific. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, with website volume up 20%, where are these people going? Uh, they're going to sites that are centered on search. And even when you look at YouTube, it's categorized as a streaming video site, but truly it is a search uh, platform because people go there and they will enter uh, search terms. Um, and then obviously search uh, is complemented by social. So I, this is a US slide. And for those of you outside the US, this shows where the volume is worldwide. So again, uh, Google, YouTube, Facebook are the, the leading um, traffic sites. And this is where content is generated, shared, and where people are searching for information. So when uh, someone will start an engagement or a, let's call it a search, uh, when they're starting to look for something uh, and they're gonna go to a website, 68% of those website visits start with a search engine. 
So maybe that sounds a little obvious. Why would it send a hundred percent? Because there are other sources such as backlinks from other sites. There's organic uh, links inside of social posts. There's direct uh, input. But aside from those three areas, yeah, it's either going to be uh, a, you know, you're going to start with Google, um, you know, Baidu. You're going to start with um, Yahoo or Bing. Uh, and ninety-two percent of the search is uh, owned by uh, by Google. No, so when people enter something, great. If you are not on the first page, you are, um, I'll say, borderline uh, irrelevant to that search because the more information that they put into that top search bar, and here you can see so what we call a long tail where there's actually uh, six words entered. The average uh, long tail keyword group has about four words. But that's going to change every time you will um, arrange the uh, the words in, in a in a different uh, string or sequence. So um, if you can see here that 75% of people never go to the second page of uh, Google search, um, and 60% of those who do click through are going to click through on those first three organic findings. And organic is an alternative to paid. And we're going to talk about paid search, but that's where you see at the top of your Google page where it says sponsored, um, those are pay-per-click and people have paid to be at the top. But this is a view of what it would look like from an organic non-paid view, okay? So we're gonna talk here about uh, what is digital marketing. Uh, you know, real quick here, pay-per-click on one side, search engine optimization on the other side. Uh, and let's first start with search engine marketing, uh, also called paid search. So this is where your ads appear when someone is entering those particular words uh, in, in their search. So in this case, commercial printing, you can see that first ad uh, that this company paid for uh, to be at the top when someone's searching for those terms. And with search engine marketing or paid search, you can set your budget and you can scale this according to your um, your, your strategy, your response rate, and timing. So you could say, I only want to spend $50 or $500, and it will stop when you hit that mark. So when we look here, at, in this case, when someone's searching for, let's say, printing services or printing company, um, Google uh, will tell you, there are other uh, sources as well, but you know, just from a real quick, you can uh, do a, a search for Google Keyword Planner. And uh, it will show you for each of those search terms, what is the average monthly search volume and what would the cost per click be? In this case, it's US dollars. So if uh, you wanted to look for printing services, there are 110,000 searches on average for that uh, set of two words. And Google will charge you $10.12 whenever someone clicks on that word. There are some advantages and disadvantages. I will probably not cover them here, but you'll have this deck afterwards to go through it. But uh, real quickly, it's about uh, the ability to launch fast with speed, uh, to test your message, to uh, test your audience, to measure the responses and iterate and scale from there. But you know, the thing about search engine uh, marketing or paid search is that it's expensive and it's, uh, it's a pay for play. So when you stop it, uh, stops the, the click. So um, your competitors can see you and it does require some skill and time to get it right. So the other part of pay-per-click advertising is display advertising. And there are three general strategies. One is through Google. And so Google has uh, you know, a display network that has more than 2 million websites that reach more than 90% of the internet. And this allows you to target you know, any of these demographics or these parameters you see in the lower uh, left hand corner and almost anywhere on the internet uh, is going to be a page that is a partner of the Google Display Network. And this allows you to uh, serve your message only to those audiences that are relevant. Similarly with LinkedIn, um, this is really, a, a, as you know, a very effective platform for um, targeting businesses because you can go to the uh, you can drill down to the role, the title, the tenure, the industry, the company size, and, uh, and be very focused and targeted with a variety of different platforms to reach your targeted audience. Facebook and Instagram, uh, obviously, maybe not so obvious, but Instagram is owned by Facebook. 
this is really probably the best platform to reach consumers directly. Uh, it has a lot of different uh, platform, even through uh, you know WhatsApp and some of the other Facebook properties, um, and really allows you to to target uh, behavior and likes and um, psychographics in a different way than um, than LinkedIn and Google can. But um, they are all watching each other, and some of these are starting to cross over. But if you're going direct to consumer, Facebook and Instagram, especially when there's a visual component of your search. Uh, strategy, Instagram can be beneficial. So this is a summary here. You'll have this in the follow-up. So um, what I didn't, uh, so the, the, the items in white here are what I already shared with you. What's in color here is a, a comparison of display advertising versus that first uh, column I showed you, which was search engine marketing. So the cost is a little bit less for display than for search. Uh, and there are some really great opportunities for you to uh, remarket or retarget those who visit your site and uh, drop off, whether they have begun a shopping cart uh, experience or whether they have just visited a, a, a landing page. You're able to retarget and remarket them uh, through display, uh, which is a nice advantage of, of that platform. It's a little bit complicated, but it's not impossible. You can learn it. Uh, you just have to match, match it with your brand and, and creative strategy. So let's talk about search engine optimization. This is the uh, organic side of digital marketing. So you don't necessarily have to pay anyone to have your, uh, let me take out necessarily. You don't have to pay anyone to have your uh, message shared. Um, this is in organic or natural platforms where people are already searching. So there are two goals of search engine optimization. The first is to increase your site's ranking on what Google calls its SERP search engine results page. Um, and once you raise that ranking and you get noticed on, you know, toward the top, then you will be able to build your organic traffic to your site and then convert those site visitors who land on that landing page to become uh, qualified opportunities. And then you can convert them to customers. So that's the, the strategy of SEO on a single slide. Um, the relevance and the authority part are the, the two main pillars. So you wanna make sure that your site's content matches what people are searching for. And the authority is having other sites linked back to your site that sends these signals to Google that your site is trusted. It has um, content that they want to share on their site. So Google should um, index it accordingly. Uh, and David? Then, yes, ma'am. I just wanted to interject here a bit just to bring this point home a little further. Um, I know that for many years, myself included, I've been telling uh, or recommending that the printers uh, invest in some content, invest in some social media help and things like that. Mm -hmm. We have passed the event horizon now mm -hmm. <laughs> where this is something that is optional unless you want to pay Google $20,000 a month to to um, help you, um, you know, get uh, search results or, or optimize your search results. So there has never been a more important time to focus on a content strategy, which is also about what, how your website describes your business and your services. That's all part of the keynote authority relevance strategy. Right. It's not difficult. It just takes a little time and effort and everybody kind of needs to be doing that now. Sorry, David, I just wanted to bring that home for you. No, it's, it's a good point. And you know, it, you said 20,000, it doesn't have to be 20,000. You could do it for a lot less. You could start with, you know, $200 uh, if you want and scale it according to your needs, but you're competing with others in your space who are, are spending more. So uh, it is an auction based system. Number one, number two, it is a pay for play. So as soon as you stop advertising with Google, LinkedIn, and Facebook, the leads stop as well. The nice thing about SEO is that it builds a little slower over time, but it stays longer. And so when you develop this content, you send it out, it gets shared, it gets liked, it gets linked. It sends you signals to Google that your site should raise higher in the, uh, the SERP rankings and then you don't have to keep paying them uh, for the, 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 uh, the search strategy or the, the paid search strategy, okay? So thanks for sharing that. So again, relevance and th authority are the two components here. Um, and then there are 
certain uh, strategies that we that you should uh, look at that are on your page. It's called uh, you know on on page SEO, which is the stuff that happens on your website, and then what happens off of your website. So, you know, there's um, I, I boiled this down into really a four step process. There are other slides that will show you that it's an 11 steps process, but I really want to simplify this to say the first thing that you need to look at is the integrity, the structure of your website itself, because Google will send its crawlers to the entire internet, look for your site, see what, see if it can find the information it's looking for. Uh, does your site load fast? Is it mobile responsive? Is it secure? Um, does it have, um, you know, tags and titles that describe its content? And is it structured in such a way that makes it easy to navigate? So without that, anything you do on SEO is going to be inefficient because Google is not able to send its crawlers to uh, crawl and then index your content and then uh, relate that to what it considers to be relevant. So the and next David, thing, I just want to go back to this uh, technical SEO for one second, uh, because most people on this call are not technical IT people like this. Mm -hmm. Who's typically somebody in an organization that might be able to deal with this or where should the printers, uh, do they go to their host? Do they go to the person who developed their website? Like uh, just for the initial assessment I'm talking about. The initial assessment, first of all, um, you should talk to your web designer developer, presumably in-house, or if you outsource it, talk to your agency. They should have the fundamentals of this. But then there are also a lot of free tools on the internet. Uh, HubSpot is one, uh, but there are probably a dozen others that you can go and you can do your own SEO audit uh, and it will give you a report card on your site loading speed, your tags and your titles and your structure and say your page is loading at seven seconds. We recommend that uh, your image size be reduced so that it loads under five seconds, things like that. So your designer developer should be able to read that report card and make those adjustments. Um, but if there are additional, more advanced uh, tech, uh, techniques that uh, need to be applied, then you should go to someone who has an expertise in uh, technical SEO. Thank you very much. Thank you. So then you build this keyword strategy based on your company strategy. What products, uh, what solutions do you want to offer to a particular audience? What is your uh, competitive landscape doing? You can look at your competitors. Uh, to see what keyword strategy they are pursuing. There are tools to do this. Um, and then you develop your content around this keyword strategy to make it very shareable, to make it uh, educational, to make it um, uh, deep. In fact, content creation has, has evolved over the last 10 years where short form blogs, you know, 200 and 300 words, are good, but they don't get shared as much as a long form article that might have 2000 words, illustrations, photos, videos, lists, how to guides, uh, and other infographic components. So there are a lot of things that you can do inside of content strategy to make it shareable and likable. And then once you develop this relevant content that has your keywords in it, you send this out to your ecosystem and to other sites that would um, link to that uh, article that's uh, interesting, useful, relevant, and shareable. And that sends those messages back to Google that your site has authority. Hopefully this one slide view kind of gives you this uh, you know, the end to end four step process. And it doesn't happen just once. You actually have to keep doing this because uh, the internet changes, uh, Google algorithms change about 500 times a year. Um, and then your competitors are also uh, working on their own content strategy. So even if you get to number five on the rankings, you don't have a guarantee of staying there. So this is an engine that has to keep running. So this is just a, a short list of some of the keywords that, you know, we did in one particular exercise and we wanted to find all the different possible ways that someone might be searching for a printer in Wisconsin. Um, and then you can see the SV is search volume. That's the average uh, number of searches in the United States for that set of keywords. And then it gives you a very long list of uh, how many uh, are, are searching for each of those. And you can go on and on, but there are tools available that will help you 
uh, define your keyword strategy and then you can test the conversion of, of each of those um, and then uh, you know make sure that your content is more relevant okay so now I'm gonna go to the next slide okay so this is just an example of about uh, 12 different blogs and articles that are on the internet uh, around the topic of print marketing and what you can see of interest are the number of links or called backlinks or inbound links from other sites to uh, that content owner's website. You can see the number of shares on various social media platforms. Um, and that is really uh, useful information for you to see the kind of content that you might be competing against. But you can also see that the content is um, somewhat um, you know, non-specific to, hey, my print shop is great, you should buy from me. But these are educational and formal and, and informational articles that people will want to uh, read while they're studying and exploring and researching. Okay. So this is an example of a print provider in the United States that uh, is getting it done right. So this is a company called uh, uh, Printing for Less. And you can see in the upper right hand corner that when you search for these sets of keywords, uh, what position that company has and what kind of search volume uh, is in place for those keywords. So 75,000 people per month in the US searching for business card size, you might think well, that seems an odd search, but when someone is searching for that, that company becomes uh, the first uh, result on the list. And then the lower left-hand corner, you can see that they're also doing a, a very, active pay-per-click campaign that supports and augments its SEO strategy. And you can see that uh, they're paying anywhere from you know, seven to $12 or so for these various keywords. And then really telling in the upper left-hand corner is there's more than 2,200 referring domains back that sends that authority message to Google. So now let's talk about local SEO for a second here. Um, so about half of all Google searches uh, have local intent. So sometimes when you just look for printing services, uh, whether or not you have your uh, browser set to uh, share your location with Google will determine whether your results will be local or national. But um, if uh, one way or the other, you want to be searchable and findable when people are looking for a printer near me or a printer in a particular zip code or a city or uh, anything else that they might designate. And you can see these various brackets that Google ads in this case uh, typically would get about 12% of the searches. And, you know, for the last few minutes, I've been talking about how you need to be at the top of the organic search rankings. And you can see that 51% of the people will click on that long list, but, this is an interesting view here because if you look at, uh, you know, Wisconsin printing, they are not in the organic search results uh, on the Google page, but they are number one result on the local uh, search what Google calls its three pack. And um, this is, you know, uh, they've really invested in this strategy to be number one from a local perspective. And that is uh, relevant to their strategy. It might not be relevant to everyone's. So there are a lot yeah. I'm really sorry to interrupt. Um, I don't know if this is proprietary, but uh, there's interest in the tools that you're using for this data research. So let's see here. Um, so I, I have to tell you, this is, um, this is my own internet research and I, I study a lot of um, different SEO and digital marketing research companies. I buy research. So some of this is uh, free and some of it is paid, but I've tried to put uh, links wherever it, I can that show the relevance uh, of the information. So I don't think I have a link for this particular one, but for most of the others, I'm including a link of where you can go and, and get these tools. But there's, uh, there are tools like Moz, M-O-Z, uh, hrefs, which is a h r e f s dot com, um, and uh, and and search engine journal. So what I'll do in the follow up, I'll give you a long list of uh, some of the sites that I use that might not be included on this deck. You're so helpful, David. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, so real quick on uh, Google My Business. So about 25% of local search uh, is driven by Google My Business, and 
Um, you need to have a, a tactic a set and a strategy to make sure that your um, content is shareable and indexable by Google. So I won't go into the depth here, but um, you can see that some of these things you'll have to look into. If you will post photos and videos as your site, if your business description is updated, if you offer certain promotions uh, over time, that sends a message to Google that your site is changing, it's dynamic, it's relevant, and so forth. On the right hand side, you can see these other sites that are not Google My Business, but these are other sites that will send signals uh, to Google My Business to say, okay, these are backlinks and the, the information on Google My Business has to be almost identical to what's on these other sites. And so that will really strengthen your position locally. So this is a, an example here of a local SEO um, analysis for this small town in Wisconsin, you know, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. And so you can see uh, the top 10 that uh, rise up in the ranking um, and how many are, uh, how many links they have, how many reviews and ratings. And so this is a, just a, a snapshot of this particular local area. Um, you could do the same for your local area as well. So real quick, I uh, flew through some of those things fast, but I wanna give you a, a review of some of those five top stats that I shared. Internet volume is up as much as 20% since March 16th. People are at home, they're on the internet, they're looking, they're, they're exploring, they are deciding what they're gonna do next, and they are um, interested in print content. 68% um, of new website visits start with a search engine, and 70% of those who go to that search page will go to the organic search, 30% will go to the pay-per-click. So there is a balance of strategy based on your budget, your timing, and your uh, competition. 75% of new searchers never scroll past the first page of Google. So you need to be relevant and authoritative to be at the top of that organic search. About half of Google searches have local intent and about half of buyers see three pieces of content before engaging with a sales rep. So I think these are probably the five key takeaways that should support some of those other tools that I included in there. And then this just gives you a choice here of what you can do next. You can, and, and I don't wanna, you know, you know disparage pay-per-click advertising because it's a critical um, and effective way of getting short-term targeted measurable leads. But it, as I said, you have to pay forever. And SEO is a longer term, more cost efficient strategy to be found um, organically and to be relative, relevant and authoritative uh, to uh, match your customers' uh, needs. Uh, so you could do it yourself. Um, there's training, there's education, there's learning, and then there's dedication involved. So like, you know, I think I saw a stat just this week that the average blog that gets ranked, uh, you know, in the top 10, um, will have um, re required five hours to write that blog. So it's not just always about hiring a, an early career worker um, who doesn't know about SEO, but they can just write content. Uh, it has to be uh, you know, strategic to your business uh, value, your solutions, your market, and your competitors. So uh, a lot of effort has to go in that research to make sure the content is useful, shareable, and likable. So it's something that uh, you should invest in, whether you do it internally or uh, hire a digital marketing expert to provide support to you. So, you know, I don't, didn't want, this is not at all a sales presentation. I wanted this to be informative and educational for you. If you have any uh, questions or need support, uh, if you want to have an, uh, an SEO audit of your website and have the explanation of what the report card means, I'm happy to provide that to you. And if I can't do it, I will refer you to uh, somebody who is better suited to do it. But I do have clients all over the world. So this is uh, something that we can do in any time zone um, uh, at, your, uh, at your leisure. So with that, we can open up to any additional questions, Deborah. Thank you so much, David Murphy. That was awesome. Um, everybody take a screenshot so we can, um, un David can turn off his screen sharing. And uh, we can open up, um, if people want to ask questions, they can open up, I'll turn on my video. Um, I do, we do have a question, um, but first, before we get to that, I do want to just um, talk to you quickly, I mean, ask you a question and um, sort of a question. Um, 
So the reality of the situation is if anybody looked at the chart of keywords and people search, search printing near me, there's 20 million results or something like that. We cannot afford to pay Google for those click per, per, you're never going to show up on that unless you are HP or you are a national, you are an LSC or something like that, that everybody's paying for those ads. So forget that. But things like pamphlets, you know, specialized things is, is where that can actually help if, to David's point, people are searching that. They have to be searching it for you to be found. Right. Now, in my limited experience um, with, with uh, digital marketing, um, content and social media and retargeting, uh, social content on websites, social media ads and retargeting website visits is probably the most attainable, achievable, and quickest way for a printer to get a result. If you agree with that, and I know you, this is not a sales presentation, but I want you to give everybody the opportunity to understand how you can help them with something like that. Oh, I can help them. How your company, how a digital marketing company, a partner, whether it's you or somebody else, why they should perhaps look, look for a partner instead of trying to take it on themselves. So whether it's my company or your local company, you should make sure that you are starting from the top. And when someone contacts me and says, hey, you know, we'd like to do a pay-per-click campaign with uh, Instagram, can you help me? I first say, let's take a look at, you know, what your marketing strategy is and your business strategy, what your expectations are, um, you know, what is your budget? What is your timeline? And what are you trying to do against your competitors? We'll do a competitive analysis against your solutions. And then we can see how you're already doing and what you're aspiring to do. So I, before I do anything, I start with a very strategic, um, high level approach to make sure that whatever you want to do tactically matches your business strategy. And then we look at those inside of those, um, you know, inside of those objectives, they look at the timeline and your budget. I only have um, $2,000 to spend per month, but I want to be, you know, number one on Google uh, organic search. We will look and see, okay, who is already number one for the keywords that you think you're targeting for? Can we beat them with great content and great sharing and great links? Or if we can't beat them directly, how can we use a long tail keyword strategy to go around them to be more relevant to a lower audience uh, volume, but be number one or number five or you know, in the top 10 for that particular search. So you don't always have to go after the biggest competitor head on. You sometimes, you very often have to be smart about going around them because you know, you don't, a lot of times you are not the biggest, um, in the in the market and so you're competing against bigger uh, deep deep pockets and so you need to be smarter and leaner and agile so i really work with my clients to say should we go for short-term pay-per-click to get some measurability to define the audience to test your keyword strategy and the conversion rate and then long-term strategy how can we build up your your uh, relevance so that you rise more organically and, and naturally and every one of these options I look at a, um, a uh, you know, an ROI for it. And I, there's no guarantees with anything, but I right. say, this is what we should expect based on what's happening. How many searches, how many will, should click through. And once they land on your website, how many will click on the button to say, I, I want to talk to a sales rep or I want to order. And then we look at that, what that customer acquisition cost is divided by the uh, investment. And then we determine whether we need to, uh, make a pivot or not but we're always iterating and even if we get to where we're going to be uh from that first set of goals kind of keep changing it because your competitors are too and um can you just give maybe a little more um information about what retargeting is like so i i um i've searched something i've clicked on your website now how can digital marketing help a printer from that point on sure so um there are a couple of different aspects and they're, they become somewhat interchangeable, the terms uh, remarketing and retargeting. Um, but uh, there are options inside of each where you could, if you could capture information about that 
old customer who gave you their email a long time ago and you have or you've collected their new email information you can send them an email saying hey by the way uh, you left this in the shopping cart or we see you visit our site thank you very much we just want to give you this free piece of content for your future education but here's also a 25 percent offer for this particular thing you were looking for and it's good for the next uh, 45 minutes so you could do that through email but you could also do it through uh, Facebook and Google to have that display ad sent to that person and we've all experienced that where we're shopping for shoes and then 10 minutes later we get a shoe ad uh, and some people think it's annoying uh, but frankly it's super effective and uh, that's why it's done and it's growing right yeah I definitely um you know, think of it as a reminder. I don't think of it as an annoyance. Um, we have some uh, questions about spam. I'm not sure if this is your area of expertise or not, but um, uh, marketing, email marketing and spam rules in the United States. Yeah. Um, we so, don't have the same things as Europe, but yeah. Um, questions. Yeah, so uh, can spam is a US um, law that prevents you from spamming people via email without permission. So it's um, really important that you uh, get permission to send high volume emails uh, unless you have a, a current relationship with that customer. Um, and so um, non-permission based emails, uh, if, you know, if, if uh, convicted, it can be uh, really expensive for the sender. Um, and the, 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 uh, a lot of countries will either mirror or adopt that, but, uh, uh, and my friend Jessica Medina is a true expert here, so she's offering some input here on, on chat, so she does some uh, great uh, remarketing and retargeting from her business. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you have permission, solid, keep it relevant, keep it uh, according to their um, uh, parameters, but if you don't, you're really, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting uh, content that is shareable and likable that they want to say, I want to get more of this. Um, how we are talking to printers here, you were in the printing industry. We don't want to completely remove print from the mix here because as we know, and as we tell, as the printers tell their own customers, it's an omni channel marketing mix. That is what gets the most results. So how can the printers tie in print marketing about their business to digital marketing? So it's a, I would say it's an ecosystem. So when they're already um, sending your outbound direct mail campaigns with email in sequence, followed up by telemarketing, you know, have campaigns based on topics, based on seasons, based on uh, calendar events. So when it's uh, near the holiday season, you've got certain sets of content that are strategically placed inside that campaign. Have your uh, blog, your article, your infographics, and your video content online that supports that same message so that you aren't talking about two entirely different things that when they see you uh, on Facebook or, or on LinkedIn, you're talking about something entirely different than what they just received an email from you about. So I would say if you bring it all in together holistically and have a sort of a staged calendar uh, to your, uh, your content strategy, it gives a very consistent message to your audience. Uh, Jessica, did you have a question or were you just waving? If you have a question or want to make a comment, feel free to uh, unmute yourself. I think she was waving, but she was also <laughs> no question. Also just sharing some of her knowledge about uh, it's can spam. Um, David, realistically, what if a printer wanted to work with a digital marketing partner? I know, I know that there's an assessment involved, but just ballpark wise, how much money a month are they looking to budget for? Uh, I mean, how do you even measure it by how many people might contact you? How, what would you say the, the range is not getting involved with paying Google for ads? Uh, the range is probably in the two to $4,000 a month um, scope. And you could might, and, you, and 
you could do it for less. You can, you know, first of all, SEO doesn't necessarily have to cost money. You can hire the people internally to do it, but that has a cost. So if you have a, a part-time employee, that might cost you $30,000 a year, which is right. $30,000 a month, right? So uh, what you can do with an agency is they can get started almost right away. And, um, you know, I would say a lot of our small uh, print provider clients will might start with a $2,000 a month budget, but then once they get some ROI and conversion data, and then they want to expand their, uh, you know, their scope, then they might in, in, improve on that because you want to keep investing as long as you're getting a, a good return on it. But, you know, you could do it for under 2000, but you're competing against others who are spending more, but that is probably the, the entry point of, uh, of effectiveness. I mean, uh, to your point, I know a few printers who obviously are in a situation now and they can't have in employees um, and they had to let a lot of uh, people go and they have redirected that money into uh, Google and um, it they actually brought back a few employees because of it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where I got the $20,000 a month thing. This guy's not playing around, but he got his business back back and was able to reopen his second print shop, which was closed down, nice. making that investment. Um, typically, um, sorry, sorry for all these random questions. Uh, do you know, can you average what it, uh, the, uh, approximately what it costs a printer to uh, get a new customer, the cost of acquisition per customer? Oh, gosh. Um, it depends I know, it could on your B2C, B2B in different markets, but you know, if you're, if you were B2B going after high volume commercial accounts, it might cost you, uh, you know, a hundred or $200 to acquire a new customer. But if your average order value is a thousand or $5,000, that's uh, easy money. So, uh, but it could be much lower when you're doing higher volume B2C, if you have an e-commerce store. So I don't want to scare anybody off with that hundred dollars if you don't, because it No, really I don't think, I think it, I think it actually makes the case how online starts to doesn't sound so expensive when right. you when you think about I mean and it's not just it's it's the dinner and the the drinks and the phone calls and the time I mean there's a uh, I always think of digital marketing as like an invisible sales force working for you with right. intelligence behind it uh, so an intelligent person in the tower giving the army you know instructions but then they're out there doing their thing when you're sleeping when you're in the shower when you're talking to somebody else they're working for you so I, it's super important right now that the printing industry embraces this and not only because it's going to help their business, but the, um, the better thing here is that once you get a tiny little grip on this, you can start offering it to your customers yes. as a service, right. same way you're going to ease into it with content and, and, um, keywords and and social media ads your retail customers your local customers can need that help and they'll they can't afford it david but they can afford a you most likely a print shop so um i'm not sure if you have anything else to add david it's uh two o'clock so i want to be mindful of everybody's time david will send his deck and bonus information to everybody who registered uh david any final words just, you know, I would say get started on this in one way or the other, you know, make the investment internally to learn um, and, and, and uh, develop content strategy uh, that matches your business strategy. But, uh, you know, don't be uh, shy about leaning on an expert who can help you get started quickly. And then if later on you want to internalize it, great. But, uh, you know, this is the time right now when everyone's on the internet, uh, people are deciding what the next stage is going to be. Uh, this is the opportunity for you to uh, pivot on your strategy and, and to get some good content out there that people are going to um, be interested in. So And develop a new and relevant uh, contact list because people, you know, to your point before, people are moving around, they're changing jobs. I mean, you need to reconnect with them in some manner. And, um, you know, it it is about lead generation, you know, um, uh, closing the deal is, a, is another part of it, but you need to have people to talk to in order to uh, make a deal and you can't find them right now. They're online looking for you. Absolutely. Be there when 
um, to meet them at that point. So David, uh, again, uh, your website is inventmarketing.com. Right. And uh, you could connect with David Murphy on LinkedIn. Uh, he uh, he gave all of his information, but I will include it as well in the blurb of the replay. I want to thank everybody uh, for for uh, attending and for your time and for your questions. And uh, David Murphy, again, cannot thank you enough for, um, I don't want to say stepping over to the dark side because we're, we're on the same side now. But I'm so glad that there's somebody who understands the print business and printers on that side of things now, because I think that will be the deciding factor for a lot of print businesses. The digital marketing people, no offense to them, they don't understand the print business. That's, they just understand digital marketing. But one printer is different than another. It needs different content. It needs an understanding uh, that a digital marketer doesn't have, you know, just like they wouldn't have it for a dentist and what, a, you know, uh, pertains to a root canal or something like that. So stick with your experts. Now we've got a printing expert in the digital marketing vertical. It makes me very happy. So thank you so much for yeah. agreeing to speak to everybody. And I will send everybody away, sir. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and a great evening.